Hello guys, this is Adip. Welcome to my channel Movement Science, where I simplify biomechanics with Joe. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also check me out on Instagram, where I post pictures of my notes, and the reference time for all the topics that I'm going to cover will be mentioned down in the description. So check that out, and let's get started. In this video, we are going to talk about the wrist complex. This will be an introduction video. So I will be talking about the bones that are present in your wrist joint. Then we will go on to the articulation, what articulation it forms and then the motion at the wrist joint. So it will be a short video and the next video we will be going into detail of each joint that is the radiocarpal and then the midcarpal joints. So let's start with the topic. First coming on to the bones, there are eight carpal bones. And there's a mnemonic to remember this. It is, she looks too pretty, try to catch her. So over here, C is scaphoid, looks L is lunate, 2 triquetrum, P pisiform, tri is trapezium, 2 is trapezoid, C catch is capitate and H her is hamate. Okay, so if we see over here, this is where the bones are. Over here, scaphoid, then lunate, okay. You can see lunate over here, lunate, then your triquetrum, then your pisiform over here. Then comes the trapezium over here, then the trapezoid, then the biggest one is the capitate. After capitate comes the big one that is the hamate. Okay, and hamate has a hook which is called as the hook of hamate. So these are the bones, and you can easily remember it with this mnemonic. And please remember the mnemonic starts from the thumb. So she looks too pretty, try to catch her. Okay. And next going ahead, we'll look at the articulation, right? So this joint has the radiocarpal articulation that is basically the radius articulating with the carpal over here. And then the mid carpal articulation that is the carpals articulating with the other carpals. So radiocarpal joint and the mid carpal joint. And this is a model that was proposed. It's called as the two joint system. And what this does is it, it can explain a lot of things. It can explain the high range of motion by looking at the proper mechanics of it, which we will learn in the future video. Then it also tells how it can, the wrist joint can hold a lot of pressure. And also the structures at the wrist, there are so many structures. There are very less chances of these structures getting pinched when the movement happens at these two joints, right? At the two joint system. So going on to the function of it, the function of the wrist joint mostly is controlling the length tension relationship. Now, what do I mean by this? Your muscles from your forearm come and cross your wrist joint and then go and attach over here, right? So, to create the force at your hand, you need to have a good length tension relationship. That means your muscle should be in optimal position to create the force. Basically, if you see, I flex my wrist and then I try to grasp something it's not that strong compared to I extend my wrist and then grasp something right so this is the length tension relationship when your forearm flexors are in lengthened position you can generate force much better compared to when they are in the flexed position so that's what your wrist controls the length tension relationship which impacts your fine motor strength right fine grip adjustments balance and control at the distal part of your hand and also what we have seen is the anatomy at wrist joint it varies with person to person which can change how your hand functions next part is the motion this has a biaxial motion that means it moves in two around the two axes that is first this axis and then this axis so there is flexion and extension over here and then there is radial deviation and ulnar deviation and the range of motion, if we see, flexion is around 0 to 65 to 85 degrees. And then extension is from 0 to 60 to 85 degrees, right? And then radial deviation can go up to 20 degrees like this, okay? And ulnar deviation would be 0 to 20 to 45 degrees, okay? So this is flexion, extension, radial deviation, and ulnar deviation. Ulnar deviation is higher compared to radial deviation why because if you can see this ulna is 
shorter correct and there is space over here so it's easier and there is more space for your wrist and the carpal bones to move into the ulnar deviation we will learn about ulnar variants in the coming videos and next is the supination pronation which is kind of debated we really don't know if the movement actually exists some amount they say that some amount of supination pronation do does exist in the distal part of your wrist so that's all we have for this video what did we see we learned about all the bones right they are mnemonic she looks too pretty try to catch her then we moved on to the two joints that is the radiocarpal and mid carpal joints next video will be about the radiocarpal joint anatomy and then the mechanics functions we saw the main function was it controls the length tension relationship which helps in the distal functions and then we saw the motion that is flexion extension radial and ulnar deviation right so with that we finish off this small topic that's all for today guys thank you for watching if you like my content please like share and subscribe to the channel it will really help me out and thank you for watching